Hi and welcome back to the channel today. Thank you so much for joining me here on the living room floor as always for a little bit of wedding chat and this is the first instalment of the week. Today I wanted to cover a subject that was really really close to my heart and something that I have seen going on in the wedding industry for a number of years and often kind of left a little bit behind and not really thought about but it's one of the biggest trends and it's been growing in the last few years. Would have been huge for this year but the less said about weddings this year the better but it's going to be something that's only going to get bigger in the future and I know is top of your list of priorities for so many of you. Today we are going to discuss 10 steps that you can take to minimise your impact on the environment and ensure that you have an environmentally friendly wedding with a sustainable ethos behind it. So I hope you really enjoy. Don't see this as things that you must do. Being environmentally friendly and sustainable is a really huge undertaking and the wedding industry in itself is not that environmentally friendly. There's a lot of transport that goes on, a lot of carbon emissions involved in that with guests traveling to the wedding and deliveries um, coming to your wedding. There's a huge amount of food wastage and in itself all the stuff you use on the wedding day. It's a lot of single use stuff, a lot of plastic stuff, a lot of plastic wrap around things um, that you can't necessarily control. But what I wanted to do is I believe it's super important for us all to take steps um, to minimize our damage to the planet as much as we can that I give you a few ways in which you can make small alterations to your wedding day to ensure it is as sustainable and eco-friendly as possible. So I really hope you enjoy. If we haven't met before my name is Laura Beth and I'm a professional wedding planner here in the UK and this little channel if it's your first time here is my little wedding world where each week I get to share hints, tips, secrets and stories into the wedding industry to help you with your planning journey and ensure it's as stress free as possible and really enjoyable. So without further ado we're going to get straight on into the video today and I really hope it gives you some great ideas to make your wedding day more eco-friendly and sustainable. So let's start. Number one it's more of an obvious one but I think it was definitely worth adding to the list and mentioning and that is all about shopping local. Whether you're getting married close to where you live or you're doing that in a destination or far away, always find suppliers that are close to that venue where possible. Speak to the venue, do research online, ask for recommendations is the best way to do this. By shopping local you're not only supporting your local economy to that venue but you're also cutting down on extra costs associated with delivery charges. And believe me, these can be a lot in some cases, especially if people are traveling a long way. So by doing this, you're not only being environmentally friendly, you're cutting down on carbon emissions, but you're also saving money on your budget. So this is well worth looking into. Number two on the list is avoiding lots of disposable items on the wedding day. And this is specifically when it comes to your bar with plastic glasses and your catering with maybe disposable plates and bowls and cutlery, things like that. Often when you're looking at your venue or your catering, these items will be included and the bar as well. Sometimes they're not, and in this instance, you may then turn ultimately to just go to disposable items. This is fine, and if this is the only option you've got, then look into using more um, environmentally friendly or recyclable options rather than ones that just have to go straight to landfill after your wedding. There are so many options out there. It may be a little bit more expensive, but it's definitely le worth looking into. The other option you've got is if your bar or your catering company or your venue doesn't already come with plates um, and glassware, cutlery, things like that, there are usually local services that you you can um, employ it to bring in all that sort of stuff. So you let them know how much you want of everything, they bring it in for the day, you use it, you stack it back up on the crates and they collect it dirty. Win-win situation, you don't even have to watch it up and you're ultimately not putting stuff in the bin at the end of the day. So minimizing your disposables and things like that on the wedding day is really, really important. Now I understand with bars sometimes that they say you've got to have plastic. So I thought this one was interesting to add on um, at the end of this kind of section of number two is if you are asked to do plastic, a way around this could be um, giving each guest their own glass and this can come in the form of doing it as a favour with like their name or something on it like that or maybe even just something personal to your wedding so the date of your wedding, your names, things like that. The guest then uses this glass for the whole day and they just keep refilling it as they go up to the bar rather than having lots of plastic disposable glasses. So a single solid plastic glass that they can keep with them for the day, they can either take that home as a memento or put it in the bin at the end of the day and at least it is reducing so much more than if they had seven or eight different glasses throughout the day. Number three on the list that's mentioned stationery. I talk about stationery all the time in my videos especially when it comes to budget saving because there is so many different options to go for and so many li little different bits that you can add on to the day and whilst it can be great to have all the options it does end up just clutter on the day and it can be stuff that just ends up in the bin. So if you're looking to minimize your environmental impact scale down to the minimum you can do and use recyclable products. There's so many gorgeous recyclable papers, people use vegetable inks nowadays. I've 
even seen a great option where there's like seeds embedded into the paper. So this paper can actually be planted after your wedding day and then grow some flowers or some herbs or whatever you go for. So that's a really nice option to go for. Um, that means you're not just chucking everything else in the bin. When it comes to invitations and stuff, best way to do this, obviously skipping the save the dates because that's kind of an extra bit of paper that you may not need or need to do. And with the invitations, you can cut down on the amount of paper and bits that you put in an invitation by creating your own wedding website. So this means you just then have to send one simple invitation with directions to the website rather than the invitation plus the accommodation plus the RSVP plus the details for the day plus extra little bits of cards for them to respond to you. It just cuts all that out. So that's a really good way to minimize your paper usage on the day and any paper that you do use, make sure that you can recycle it or plant it in your garden. Number four on the list, I want to talk flowers. It may not instantly come to you as something that you need to think about, but a lot of flowers nowadays are shipped in from Holland. People go for flowers that can't actually be grown in this country at that time of year for their wedding day, so they've got to come in a lot further than you would expect. And flowers out of water all day, they do not last that long after the wedding and ultimately get put in the bin very, very quickly. So what I would highly suggest you do if you're looking at being more eco-friendly is discuss with your florist seasonal flowers which are grown in the UK and have a shorter transportation distance so they're not going to be um, shipped as far and produce as many emissions and obviously cutting down on the amount of flowers you have making sure that any flowers that you use are going to be reused throughout the day and used all day rather than just flowers for the ceremony and then a new display of flowers for your reception see if you can maybe move from your ceremony into your reception reuse your flowers and get the most out of them for that day another great trend that I've seen coming up is actually potted flowers on the day and plotted plants potted plants, can I say that word, um, as your centerpieces and in decor throughout the day. They can be um, either grown in your garden or have hired from a florist. You use them on the day and then they take them back or you take them back to your garden and they can continue to grow and they aren't wasted in any way. I just wanted to add one little thing onto this list as well. When I was researching a few things, I saw a lovely idea for potted herbs to have on your tables on the wedding day. They can then be used as garnishes when your guests are having their meals and also as garnish for drinks. So if you're having pims, and you've got some mint plants, people can use those as they need them. And I just thought it was a really cute way of kind of having interactive um, displays on your wedding day, but also being eco-friendly in the fact that these plants can then just be taken back to a garden or returned to the supplier you had them from and continue to grow. I hope I get to do a wedding where I can incorporate some of that one day as it sounds really lovely to do. And I think it would smell incredible. Number five on the list is catering. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that there is an awful lot of food wastage in weddings and it can be up to 10% of the food that they bring in actually just ends up in the bin. Things like buffets, grazing tables, things like that tend to be more wastage than plated meals because obviously portions, they tend to put more out because people are gonna pick at it more. But the biggest thing you can do is actually be very accurate with your numbers. If you've got people dropping out or not coming, let your caterers know as soon as possible so they're only catering for the numbers they need to. If they're bringing in extra food that's already prepared, it can't be taken back and reused for something else, and it's generally just put in the bin at the end of the night. So always make sure you're giving exact numbers, and if you're really conscious about making sure that your food isn't traveling too far, and again, reducing your carbon emissions, then make sure you're sourcing um, catering companies that are very much farm to fork sort of places. It's local farms and local um, places that they're getting the food from. It's coming straight to them, they're preparing it, and then it's coming to you, rather than it coming you know, maybe in from Europe, going to a factory to be packaged, to be brought somewhere else, to be brought again, and just ultimately cutting out as many of the middlemen as you possibly can. Number six on the list, I wanted to move more into decor because this is where there can be a huge amount of waste. So a great way to save on wastage and ultimately buying things just for a wedding day is to upcycle and reuse decorations that you've got, go to antique shops, go to bargain places where it's all secondhand things, um, even builders, merchants and garden centers you can pick up little bits of extra wood, extra pallets, stuff like that for a much lower cost than what you would do if you were buying it yourselves. Recycling is obviously great and upcycling is perfect for the wedding industry. It gives you a chance to put your own stamp on everything whilst reusing something that hasn't just been made for the sole purpose of your wedding day and then to be gotten rid of at the end. If you're not big on DIY, like me, I'm not the best when it comes to creative stuff like that, then rope in friends or family members that love that sort of thing or go on here on YouTube. There are so many videos out there. Use it as a chance to kind of level up your skills and find out and learn something new as you may surprise yourself doing something that you never thought you could do before. 
when you're buying things as well and upcycling, think of things that you'll want to reuse in your house after. So whether there's some nice crates that then you can use in your house to put blankets and bits in, or maybe there's fairy lights that you want for your wedding day that can go in your garden or can come out, out on your Christmas tree every year. Doing things like that minimizes the amount of waste after your wedding, and it's got a purpose beyond that one day, and that is really good to consider with every single purchase that you have. So moving on from that, we have number seven, and this is all about reducing unnecessarily unnecessary waste and purchases. With everything you go to purchase for your wedding day, whether that be buying it from new or buying it secondhand to upcycle and do something with yourself, always ask yourself the question, do I really need this item? On wedding days, I see so much stuff that people buy and it comes to the wedding day and we look at it and they go, I don't know where I'm gonna put it. And it ultimately just gets left in a box under a table or in a storage room and never used. And then they get home the next day and it goes in the bin. That is an item that has been bought for no purpose and is likely to go and end up in landfill for years to come. So where possible, you want to be trying to avoid these sorts of things and making sure that everything that you purchase and use is has got a purpose and can be either sold or reused after the wedding day. Along with this, you wanna try and avoid the extra and unnecessary packaging that comes with so many things. So many new items will come with plastic film around them. If you opt for individual bags of confetti or individual favors, they might be in like clear cellophane, stuff like that. Again, more stuff that's just gonna end up in the bin. Balloons, we all know how eco-friendly they are on the wedding day, as beautiful as they look. There's always another sort of option that you can use, which is um, easier to recycle after the wedding day. Swap out your individual bags of confetti for either cardboard cones, or as you know me, just put a bowl in there and grab a handful as you need it. Swap out your favors to go in either recyclable boxes, or maybe do something that doesn't even need any packaging at all, and it can be eaten, and then it's gone and not left over after the wedding day. I guess asked about favours a lot when it comes to this as well and I talk about favours a lot too. A lovely way that I've seen to reduce waste but still do favours is offer um, charitable donations and then in some way leave a note to let um, each guest know what you've done with their money and this can be a great way to offset your carbon footprint and donate to projects that are um, offsetting this. So it's a really good way to look and I'll link a website below that I found where you can do this sort of thing um, and I think it's a brilliant thing to do on the wedding day. Number eight on the list, we are getting towards the end now. Um, um, I wanted to look at your wedding outfit on the day and the wedding outfit of kind of your bridal party um, and your wedding party as well. Now this isn't going to be suitable for all and this is quite a big thing to look at but there are a few different ways you can look at your wedding outfit for the day. The most sustainable way is going to be reusing something that's already made um, and you could decide to rewear, say your mother's wedding dress and if it's not quite your style you can always get a seamstress involved to um, redo it and there are so many um, amazing higher options for wedding dresses if you want to go for a designer dress that maybe you can't afford, you can actually hire a designer dress that you get to wear. Other people have worn it, but they're always clean, they're always beautiful, so you may consider that that is a good option for you. It's traditional that the guys in the group always hire their suits, but we never look at that for the female and the dresses, the bridesmaids, that sort of thing. So hiring your wedding dress and also hiring bridesmaids dresses is also a great thing. Or having an outfit that you're going to rewear again or can repurpose. It's not something that's just built for one day and then left in a box. So there are loads of lovely options and letting your bridesmaids even choose their own dresses for the wedding day means that it might be something that they'll wear again. So they're all lovely ways to do that, but I agree and I understand that this might not always be possible. And a lot of us love the idea of going to a bridal shop, choosing our wedding dresses and having something that is made for us. So if that's something that you want to do, always look for sustainable production and make sure that the materials used are sustainable and um, eco-friendly. And there are so many options with that. And equally, there are so many incredible UK designers in this country and so many bridal shops that are stuck in these. If you fall in love with one of these dresses, at least you know it's made in the UK, it's produced in the UK, and it's even tailored in the UK as well. So you're not going to be shipping your dresses across the world, ordering it from America, then it's shipped to China, then it's shipped back here, then it's shipped somewhere else. You can cut that all out and go for a British designer where it's home, effectively homemade in our own country. So number nine on the list is eco-friendly wedding venues. And no, I do not mean that you need to go and get married on a farm with a compostable toilet. And if that's your thing, that is absolutely lovely. But if it's not your thing, don't feel like that's your only option when it comes to being environmentally friendly in your choice of wedding venue. Having a look at their sustainability and their environmental policies on the website can often tell you a lot about a venue and finding out all about their recycling procedures and how they handle lots of things. 
things. So that is a great way to start and choosing somewhere that places that in quite high priority is always a good thing. And again, this might be a big deciding factor for you and could be a difficult one to do depending on what you're looking for, but choosing a location which is close to where the majority of your guests are going to come from is going to cut down on emissions of people getting there rather than choosing something that's really far away and everyone is going to have to travel to it. So that could be a good thing to consider. And number 10, final one on the list is recycling. And this is something that's caught me out quite a few times. So something I definitely wanted to mention on the list. Some venues will handle all that sort of side of it for you and they will dispose of your rubbish. If you're going for more of a DIY venue and you're doing a lot of it yourselves, make sure you know what the policy is with recycling and what you've got to do at the end of the event. Some venues will take your rubbish away from you but it has to be divided up into certain categories, hard plastics, papers, glass, that sort of thing and others will just take it mixed and some venues will require that you take your recycling your rubbish away with you and take it to your own recycling centre. So it's good to know what you're expected to do because if you don't know and you just chuck everything in a bag and expect the venue to take it away, the morning after your wedding you may be sat there digging through rubbish bags trying to separate all and I'm sure that is the last thing you want to do. So always check what this is going to be and if you've got to take it to your local recycling centre find out how you need to split the rubbish first off so you can make sure the majority of it gets recycled in the first place and before the wedding you can prep yourself with separate bin bags bins whatever you want to do to make sure this happens and you're not going to be digging through those rubbish bags the next day so that's it my 10 steps to making sure that you are being as eco-friendly as possible on your wedding day and thinking of the environment in your wedding plans I don't expect you to follow all of these steps exactly to the T. There's a lot of different examples there and some are not going to be possible for you and never feel bad about that. Not many people manage to cover everything um, but making these small steps can make a huge impact on the environment. So let me know in the comments below what you're planning to do for your wedding day to make sure that your wedding is environmentally friendly and if you have loved this video and it's given you a few ideas of what to do on your wedding day of course hit that thumbs up button for me and if you haven't subscribed already click the subscribe button and turn the bell notification on to be notified of any future videos. I will leave it there. I've talked a lot in that video I hope you followed and enjoyed and I will see you on a future video very very soon have a wonderful day or evening whatever you are doing bye